what kind of content gets uh, you know gets better placement right. essentially on its platform, which for a while was only short videos, and for a while they were favoring publishers, and so everybody was just trying to make clickbait things. Then they changed that algorithm, and so they weren't favoring publishers anymore because they wanted to focus on like family and friends and real people again, and you know be about unifying the world. And then, <laughs> and then yeah. now I think that. Um, they don't share any of the figures, but they have people who are Facebook users vote on trusted or trusty news sources. Right. Which, you know, the problem is like, then that can mean anything to anyone because, we, as we know, people like to live in their own little ideological bubbles. And so it's like, if you have a million people on Facebook that are saying, well, I think Sean Hannity is the most trusted news source because he reflects my line of thinking. <laughs> but then that's what's going to be, you know, on Facebook, and that's what's going to uh, be getting better placement and more eyeballs on it. And so the, the whole thing is just messed up and twisted. And I think what's been interesting is to see, you know, the time when uh, when New York Times first came out with just their paywall, right. people were like laughing at them, like, "Oh, you stodgy old establishment newspaper." And now everyone's desperate to try to set up a paywall because it turns out that. That's what works. You, you have gotta to set up pay. A paywall. Don't pay the New York Times. <laughs> but, and you have to diversify, though, right? You have to they'll like. Be fine yeah, they'll be fine with that. <laughs> they, exactly. they probably and will be fine with you. But yeah, if you look at what, if you look at what Vox is doing, if you look at what like Axios and the only places that are supposedly showing some type of revenue is they're they're just diversifying. So you have like you have podcasts. They're trying to make deals with studios. They're trying to sell shows to Netflix and to Amazon because. That's where the money is because you're never going to make money if Facebook and Google, which is now where all the eyes are going to to find the news, they're not going to your personal website. They're the ones taking half your ad revenue away. They created commons. They yeah. took over commons, privatized them. Now they just extract by the data, and it's another. It's just another cash app. Anything else? Can I tell you just one really sad Please. story? Since Please. sorry, just to Go. put a nice little bow on that Go. tough post line thing. So. You know, we were in the election. We <laughs> had not heard her use the N word before. <laughs> I will say, once, uh, by the time it came to my layoff, Ariane Huffington was no longer there. She wasn't the editor. Oh, there you go, honey. And then, <laughs> <laughs> I had a thing with that on that, actually. Yeah, <laughs> Uh, but they did make you sign a non-disparagement agreement, which sucks, because I think it's happening to all these other journalists getting laid off everywhere else, too, because you're not in the position to say no to the money. Right. Um, you just lost your job, but then at the same time, you, even if you got majorly screwed over, you, you can't tell anybody about it. You really can't go into detail. But a lot of these organizations uh, have been unionizing, you know, have post actually unionizing. Woo! The most viewed, uh, we were doing live streams about the election from like, you know, opioid treatment centers in West Virginia. We did one from the top of a mountain to, to talk about mountaintop removal and the coal industry and all these like really serious topics. And the most viewed live stream that I think had maybe 8 million views was just a candle that was shaped like Donald Trump <laughs> burning for six hours. <laughs> <laughs> I just watched the candle burn. We claim your space from Donald Trump. It should not be in your heads that much. But even things like that that we sort of hear a little bit trivial, like those people get really abused. I don't know if you saw, but with BuzzFeed, um, there's this woman in Michigan who has been making the BuzzFeed quizzes, which is what most people use BuzzFeed for. Right. You know, silly stuff, what, what, what type of technology are you? <laughs> those, her quizzes that she contributed to BuzzFeed alone brought them in $300 million for ad revenue. Do you know how much she was getting paid? $30,000 a year. Nothing. They were giving her gift cards. <laughs> so there, there's a whole group of that. I mean, you know, there's a lot of problems with, you know, paying for media. But there's also a problem with the power that all these media companies have, where they really do create hundreds of Well, I mean, so the problem too is 
like, it's the, one day I'll write a book called The Crisis of Middle Management. And it's because you have so That's many people great. at these organizations too that like fail upward, they're not the ones that ever get laid off, they're not the ones that are ever held accountable for anything. I've heard about that actually as a, as a business tactic in, in many companies that a strategy for the type of parasitic person you're talking about is when it's flush, you go on a hiring spree. So that when it contracts, you have you're like, oh well, I just fired six people. So I'm mean, really yeah. on it. That type of bullshit. Alona, you are one of the most valuable people in the universe of the show. You're awesome. Yeah. Woo! I'm not feeling more relaxed, I'm not feeling more calm, I'm not feeling more effective, I'm not feeling more happy. Don't respond to me. Don't blame me, don't blame the technique, blame yourself. Now, we live in a victim culture where the left blames everything on everybody else. And a lot of mindfulness teachers and a lot of others on the left, they'll say, okay, well, you failed at meditating. You couldn't follow your breath, your thoughts are all over the place. Let's examine the technique. Maybe be taught more effectively. Be compassionate to yourself. Give yourself a break and try again. I'm not going to coddle you. If you fail to become more relaxed, effective, and compassionate as a result of this technique, you blame yourself. You and I have engaged in a fiduciary agreement <laughs> where you need to agree that I am going to provide you the technique that will make you more calm, effective, compassionate, and happy. If you fail to do that, that is your responsibility. And I'm not just going to tell you that it's everybody's responsibility, but here, I think it's also your responsibility culture to move into culture. But I'm going to tell you that if you do not achieve the results, it is because of your complete inability to master the technique, attain the technique, and work with the technique. It is never on me, it is always on you. Now, take a deep breath in. <laughs> his best.
the beard. Right. And it was like nice patchy ass beard. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, if you see a YouTube commentator out here tonight, shame on you. <laughs> <laughs> this is a shame on you. Yeah. Beard looks great, Michael. Wait, the, the, you know what? The activity is all that counts. I actually really do like it. Like a little insight on these stupid algorithms. There's nothing funnier. Then when somebody like, particularly like a Sam Harris type person, is like, oh, look at the ratio on the video. And it's like, it's your fucking watch time. You know? <laughs> and, you just watch, and you just wrote a comment, which is the most helpful thing you can do. Uh, T, what is your right one Oh. I wanted, now, the, I wanted the scam that was going for my audience. So to yeah. flip them to the right. Well, no. I'm gonna scam my own audience. Because, I, yeah, I mean, somebody else. <laughs> I'm gonna scam my own 